recognizable as this icon, a band called Queen, Brian May. <laughs> to beautification and presentation. And as we celebrate 130 years of Gibson, and our artists are the DNA of Gibson. They choose to play Gibson. They and as a result, our iconic shapes have become cultural symbols. Today, we are announcing a new collaboration to life. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming That's good. Yeah, okay. okay. Not yet. Yeah. The <laughs> man coming. <laughs> Everybody was here, and that was very exciting. And I'm still not over it, as you can tell from my answer. Um, but I once met um, Brian May on a plane. I happened to have a guitar with me on the plane, so all of the plane like stewards were like, "You've got to, you know who Brian May is? Like, you've got to come and meet him." Um, he was very sweet. Uh, he obviously didn't remember that today, which I completely understand because it was like seven years ago. But um, it was nice to see him again. He was brilliant. They were all brilliant. And then I had to play a song in front of them, which was completely terrifying. Um, but I'm still glad I did it, and uh, they're still legends. It's like proving that you had a guitar on you on the day that you actually met him. Yeah, that, that was wild. Yeah. I know, it was meant to be. It I guess like, so. Yeah. I hope so. I think it was meant to be. He liked the guitar as well. I got it out of the case. He, he asked me to get out of the case. I wasn't too pushy. <laughs> but I was excited when he asked me to take it out of the case, so yeah. It was amazing for us to have living guitar legends, Brian May, Tony Iommi, Mr. Jimmy Page himself, to be here to open this space. You talk about um, having energy to make this hallowed ground. We were absolutely honored and really pinching ourselves that we could have this incredible momentous occasion for Gibson, but to do it with those living legends. And then to also introduce Rosie Frater Taylor, an incredible young woman as well. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. We're talking about you know, emerging incredible musicians and our living legends. It doesn't get better. My first memory of playing a Gibson guitar would have been long before I could afford one. Um, but that, but you have to be, you have to be like striving for things. When I was 13, uh, and I had uh, had I'd been playing the same one guitar for a few years, and it was still going to be many years before I could afford to buy another one. I would go into guitar shops, and you'd sort of sheepishly ask if you could play the Gibson, and. Um, it was always something to aspire to, and it still is. They're still such exciting instruments. I totally aspire to, to, to Gibson guitars still. There's a, actually, there's a telephone box upstairs in, in the building, inside. You go inside it, you can actually go through the wall into a secret room. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you that. Well, I did not see that. But I've told you now. Uh, well, this is it. Yeah, I think you're very lucky if you get to go in there or if you see it. But um, they've got some very nice guitars through that telephone box.
We're going to see artists on any given day that are giving lessons, doing a meet and greet, uh, doing a listening party, seeing a live performance in our venue that's right here behind me. Um, you can really, I think, touch and connect with the gamut across music culture here. The ultimate guitar experience, but the ultimate music experience. Are you going to like leave with a guitar today? What are you thinking? Well, if you say it a little bit louder and all the Gibson people are listening, then I guess there's every chance I might, if, I'm, if I smile and I'm really nice. Fingers crossed. Well, glad to see you. I see, I see a thumbs up over there. Okay, I love a thumbs up. You think it's like that because of the humidity?